passer. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab onto our weights, tummy balls, or soup cans, line dots, whatever you're using for upper body. You can also use empty hands. We're going to actually bring ourselves up to standing to so start today's class standing. I'd like us to begin with ourselves in a wide second position plie. Okay, wide second position stance. We're going to be doing plie. So now we can just hold the tummy balls by our hands here by our sides. Take a moment and just discover weights equal on both the inner borders of the three and the outer borders. The cubic bone and the sternum are all in the same vertical plane. Something we don't want to start off doing is squeezing our overly tense the buttocks. So just release any holding back there. Without necessarily seeing anything move, go ahead and spiral the inner line of your inner thighs forward. So we're going to get this nice bone rhythm of external rotation right from the get-go. Now continuing that idea, let's go right into a plie, or exhaling to lower down. These are tracking in line with big toe, second toe. And then we're going to inhale to rise up nice and tall. Let's repeat that. Exhale to go down. Again, focus on keeping those shoulders floating directly over the hips. Inhale to rise tall. So that bone rhythm of external rotation, we can enhance it extra more as we go down. We can feel it even as we rise tall. The most important thing in a plie is, keep moving on your end, at the bottom of the plie, you know, when you're at your lowest, you want to find that you're not allowing that butt to stick back. Okay? So again, we have that pubic bone and the sternum on the same plane. By doing that, especially when you're at the bottom of the plie, you're going to get this nice engagement down here of your lower abdominals. We're incorporating the arms in just a moment, so we'll exhale to go down one more time. Hold it here. Again, let's check in. Are we gripping our glutes? Do we find ourselves letting the knees fold forward? If that's the case, just readjust. Make sure those knees are open in line with the second toe. We're going to bring our arms up like a W. No breaking at the wrist, feel those shoulders melted down. What I'd like us to do now is just think of sliding the scapula down to enhance the arms elongation. Good. And then exhale, bend those elbows back down, creating the shape of the letter W. Inhale and stretch the arms nice and long. About this point, you're going to be tempted to start coming out of that plea. I'm going to ask you to stay in it. Focus on just creating more of that external rotation through the femurs. Lots of pressure on the scapula as you extend those arms. We have two more changes coming up. Inhale to extend those long arms. Exhale to bend. Feel that nice length through the neck. Let's go right into our next change of rotation. So we're going to extend those arms. Peel your left heel off of the floor as you rotate to the left. And keep in mind, we want to keep the left belt line level with the right. Press the left heel down into the mat with intention as you come to center. Let's go to the right. So we're going to peel the right heel off of the mat as we twist to the right. The lower body and pelvis are not invited to move. And then press that right heel back down. If the arms are getting aggressive, option to bring the elbows into your side. The most important thing, though, friends, is that we're finding this rotation is coming from the waistline. You want to watch that we're not overworking the arms and thinking we're rotating, when in fact we're pretty much not. So a good cue to think about when you create this rotation is let's say if we're going to the left side of the room, wrap then the right rib basket will wrap to the right side of the room. Get that opposite rib basket to rotate. I know that lower body is cooking. I know those arms are speaking to you. That's all a good thing. Keep finding length through the crown of the head. There is one tiny change. I will get you out of this plea, but stay with me. Inhale as you rotate, peeling that heel up. Exhale as you come out of that rotation, pressing that heel down with intention. One more time. Stay with me. We're going to turn those arms to W's. Bend those elbows. Extend the legs nice and long. Fantastic. Now we're going to stretch the arms over our head, kind of like the letter B, and then bend those elbows back down. What I want everyone to discover is when we lift the arms up, it's not the shoulders or even the neck or deltoids doing the raising. It's the action of your shoulder blades sliding down. Right? So we feel that depression of the scapula is what's responsible for those arms lengthening up. Good. Keep spiraling the inner line of your inner thighs forward. 
Feel weight across all four corners of both feet. Good. Glutes are soft. Pelvis is engaged, even though sit bones are narrow. Good. We're going to do one more thing as you lift those arms up. Peel the heels up as well. Good. Lower the heels down as you bend the elbows. We're going to go for two more. We have a little balance challenge coming up, my friends. Can you sense when you lift those heels up? All ten of the toe cushions equally absorbing into your mat. Hold the lift. Good. One arm lengthens down towards your hip. The other one's up. You're keeping weight across all ten toes. We're going to do this nice little scissoring of the arms. This isn't just for arm choreography. It's certainly not just to work out your upper body muscles. It's to find what we call the cross diagonal swing core activation. So keep moving at your end. The heels are lifted. And when you're scissoring those arms, we want to watch for that back bending. Also avoid any kind of side bending, or even the slightest amount of rotation is something we want to avoid. That's going to help you feel this nice connection that innervates like a zigzag throughout your torso and your pelvis. We have just a few more. Remember that idea of what's responsible for one arm lifting up is that side's shoulder blade sliding down. Good. We're going to get to our knees in just one more rep. And then let's lower those heels down. Excellent work, you guys. Let's go and down to our knees straight away. We have the weights with us. Good. We're going to take a moment. We're just going to place our hands around the handles of the dumbbell. Find your best neutral position for me, everybody. Arms are wide, shoulder width apart. Good. We slide one leg nice and long. So we want to feel that there is this great connection from our right heel up to the crown of the head. Then the left leg, the other leg slides up. Now you're in this nice plank position. Can you feel those inner thighs squeezing? What we don't want to squeeze again is the buttocks. That's going to help diminish the engagement of the abs if our glutes are engaged. Okay, so keep the inner thighs magnetized. Glutes are relatively soft. We're going down into a halfway push up. So we're not trying to touch the chest of the floor. Just feel more length in two directions between the crown of the head and the heels as you go halfway down. Inhale and extend those arms. Now, if this is troublesome on the wrist, or um, maybe you don't like it with the challenge of your dumbbells, you can lose the dumbbells. You can also do it on your forearms. But if you choose the forearm option, I'm going to look for just a little bit of a forward soft, so to speak. Good, going forward slightly and back. The reason these modifications, it doesn't matter what modification we're going for, is because we still have the main event of the exercise about stretching crown of the head and heels away from one another. So yes, the upper body is working, we get the chest working, the arms. Do you feel how the back line of your torso the whole back line of your body is stretching away in two separate directions. In lots of length going on there. Let's go for about four more, everybody. One little change on deck and three more reps. Exhale as you lower, inhale to rise up. Hold the next one down halfway. Friends who are using their hands are going to go up a quarter inch, down a quarter inch, up a quarter inch. If you're on your forearms, you're going to go ahead and lift one leg a quarter inch up, down a quarter inch, up a quarter inch, other leg, down. Good. Let's go for four. Keep dropping your shoulders away from the neck and your lobes. We got two more. We're on our back very shortly, friends. And we breathe. Woo! All right. Awesome, everybody. So let's keep the weights in hand. We're going to go right into our supine work here. So I'd like everyone to just lie down on your back. Good. Something to think about is we want to find what we call a neutral pelvis, neutral spine, neutral lower back especially. So we're never going to ask our low back to jam into or imprint into the mat. Okay? We want to have that normal lordotic curve. That's the best way to engage the deepest layer of abdominal muscle and double transverse abdominals. Holding on to the weights, okay, we're going to lift those arms up. Now, when we lift the arms, again, we know from previous exercise to feel those shoulder blades depressing down. 
This way we have a nice soft length of neck. Feet are about two, three inches apart. Good, all ten toes shining towards the wall by your feet. With length, we're going to just peel the head, neck, shoulders up off of the mat. Good, finding length, not just in the back line of the body, but also on the front side of the body. Stay here. On your next exhale, you're going to go back down, lengthening through the crown of the head. So we're not just plopping the head down, we're lengthening down. Again, we're going to inhale, small gentle nod of the chin, nothing big. Inhale to peel, head, neck, and some of the shoulder blades up. Check as you're lifting here, you can take extra breaths if you need to. Check that you haven't suddenly jammed that little back flat into the mat. You want to keep that neutral curve existing there. Good. Maybe glance your eyeballs down. Are there any wrinkles that got created on the front side of your shirt? Hopefully no. And while you or me won't see an external change, try to stretch the crown of the head towards the three-quarter line of that wall behind you. Okay? So you're getting that length that we'd love to go for here at Winter Ball. Good. And then find even more length as you lower down. Right. So let's layer on. Keep going. Do the same thing. With length and intention, we're peeling head and neck, some of the shoulder blades up. Hold, let's talk about those arms. We're going to make sure our wrists are not broken like a kitten's paws. We open those arms while holding that flexion, and then close the arms to shoulder width. Beautiful. So your eye line is probably where the ceiling meets the wall by your feet. You're not necessarily looking down at your tummy. Good. This way the neck is a continuation of the rest of the spine. Arms open equally, and then the arms close. Keep going at your end. Make sure as you open those arms, your shoulders don't shrug up. And secondly, as you open those arms, we don't want to go so far out that we have no choice but to fall out of that flexion that we've created. So we really want to find that kind of openness and broadening across the front of the chest while still keeping that sense of length through the crown of the head. Beautiful. Let's just do a few more like that. And last one. And then let's go ahead and lengthen everything back down. Still holding on to these Tony balls. We're going to bring the arms down. We're going to go a little old school here. We're going to do a hundred. That's a classical exercise with the one to twist uh, enhancement here. So what I want us to think about is we're going to now preset the hips to bring one leg to tabletop. And then the other. Again, we're not trying to flatten or jam the lumbar spine into the mat. Good. Now, instead of coming up as high as we did before, just lift your hair three quarters of an inch off the hair, off the mat. Think of looking up at the ceiling. You're going to pump the arms very kind of fast, but not frantic. Think vigorously. Eye line is to the ceiling. As tempted as you are to jam that chin to the chest and curl up, I want you to instead keep your eyes on the ceiling, feel those muscles working on the front side of the neck. The breathing is inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four. That's about 30. In, two, three, four, five. Try to keep the upper body quiet so it's not bopping about. 40. Outer thighs are magnetized, shins are parallel to the floor. Here's our last half. We're going to rotate those Tony balls to the ceiling. Make sure you're keeping the scapula stabilized. Eye line is to that white ceiling. And if you're feeling these muscles on the front side of the neck, nothing to get alarmed about. That's the intention. Let those front side muscles speak to the top abdominals. And of course, the low abs are speaking with the legs as they hold the legs up the tabletop. I'm keeping down. We're about at 80. In two, three, four, five, and exhale. Low that air swing to the ceiling. Let's go one more set. In, two, three, four, five, and exhale. Two, three, four, and relax. Nice. Go ahead and turn your head to one direction and turn your head to the other. Well, we're going to lie on our right side. Now we'll get some sideline work done. So we're going to find ourselves up on our right forearm, right hip, actively lifting away that right rib basket versus letting things kind of sink and sag here. So if you feel that lift, we can really get that core active right away, and we're not going to put a lot of stress on the shoulder. Good. One Tony ball in your left hand. Going into a little external rotation, or wait, it might not be a Tony ball where you're active, you don't know. Going into a little external rotation, I'm going to have you go ahead 
you find that left humeral bone spiraling and then bringing it right back, okay? Something to think about, we'll be layering on some challenges in a moment, is we're looking for that left elbow to stay in a fixed position against the sideline of the torso. Similar to a saloon door, that left arm is going to open. Left upper arm bone, left elbow stays super glued to the side of your body. Still actively remembering to not let the right the basket drop or collapse on the right shoulder. Layering on from there, we can extend the hip up, giving a little more of that right waistline to work. Beautiful. That you've seen, if you're choosing this adventure, see the world sideways. Layering on from there, if it's available to you, you can take that left leg long, left toe can stay, big toe can stay on the floor, or hold that left leg hovering. Beautiful, friends. Now it's about right now that we have to watch that so we're not sinking in our shoulders, okay? If anything's too aggressive, you can scale down the layers of challenge, okay? So you might go back to just keeping your hip on the mat, okay? We have about five more, so wherever you are is great. Let's go for four. We have exercise in three, reminiscent of our upper body jumps on the window former. That's happening in two. And we have one. Beautiful. Let's bring it back down. Let's go ahead and take a Tony ball or a weight, whatever you're using in both hands, one in each hand. We're going to go ahead and find your best mermaid or merman sitting position. That's where you're kind of like a pretzel here. Beautiful. You have a Tony ball on each hand. We're going to offer you this. Square your chest and shoulders as much as you can to the wall uh, in front of you. You know, bend your elbows. Try to keep weight equal on both hands the same. Then, without too much push from the floor, there will be a little bit. We're going to rise up and rotate one arm to the wall behind you. Bring both hands on the floor at the same time. So we're inhaling, spiraling as we rotate, and then land both hands essentially at the same time. Versus kerplunk, kerplunk, drop. Okay? What that's going to force you to do is work more from the waistline as you do this spiral versus pushing off from the floor like I'm doing now. This isn't totally wrong, okay? There's some benefit to that. But try to find less push and thrust from the arms. Find more waistline rotation, guiding you up, levitating you practically off the mat, and then resisting gravity as you lower down. Do you feel that? In your abdominals more, okay? You don't just let yourself perform for one crash, okay? Good. Now this opposite hip, I'm not, in this instance it's the right hip, that right hip does by no means need to touch the mat. You do not need to super glue your right glute to the mat. You do want to just release that hip towards the floor, okay? Good. Lifting up off the pelvis. Okay, we're going to go for a few more like that. We have two. Woo! Feel that way, so I hope you do too. Resist. Last one. Inhale. Up. We'll need to all fours. Exhale, lower down. Very good, everyone. Let's go to the next side later. Okay, right now, I'm going to have us go right into what we call belly slicer here. So, we're only going to use one weight, if you would, please. And we'll hold that in your left hand to start. Find yourselves in your longest neutral position. Yeah, you're on your hands and knees, four point heel essentially. I'm going to give you a growth button. So you have a tailbone ground in a neutral, stretching in opposite directions. What we don't want to see is this. You see how my tailbone's tucked under? So you feel it. It's not something we externally see, but you feel internally the crown of your head stretching actively to one wall, while just as actively the tailbone stretching to the wall behind you. There's only about one tiny inch of space between your two knees. Beautiful. Now from here, you're going to find that connection of your shoulders, away from your earlobes. You're going to find your hips a little bit over your knees. They're not back by your heels. Then we're going to lengthen that left arm up. I'd like the left wrist to be facing the wall behind you, not the foot. Okay, not in front, the wall behind you. And then lower that left arm down. It might not come all the way below your shoulder. Especially if you've got a dumbbell. 
you might not get that arm right below your shoulder when you lower it. Right? This only goes out this much. That's okay. It doesn't matter. What matters, the main event of this exercise, I will tell you in a second. I want you to know I caught my wrist broken. I want you to check that out for yourself as well. Make sure that left wrist is long. What matters here is that we feel the abdominals, okay? The main important part of the exercise isn't how high up you lift that left arm. The most important thing is, do you feel your abdominals engaging? You will, you most definitely will, if you keep your weight equal on both knees the same. By that I mean, as that left arm's lifting, don't even slightly shift the weight to that right knee more than your left. You'll feel those abdominals if, when you lift the left arm, your left chest doesn't slightly spiral to the wall on your left. Rather, you keep your chest square before we get here. All right? Good. Something else that I find that we have to pay attention to is the right elbow. That's the one on the arm and on the floor. Are we breaking, or I should say, are we hyperextending in that right elbow crease? Maybe give me some breathing in the crease of that right elbow. That's going to help you find more connection here to the back, and that in turn will help you find more connection to your core. We've got about three more to go, friends. Very nice. No big surprises here. We got two. And one more. Excellent, guys. Moving on, one more thing to do before we start to go to the other side of things. Let's lose the Tony balls for a second. And I want everyone to find, if you would please, you're back in that supine position yet again. We're going to take both of our legs into tabletop. Remember, no flattening the lumbar spine. Hands go behind the head. Elbows are somewhat in your peripheral vision. Contraction, stretch, and length. We're going to go into some crisscross. So we're going to peel head, neck, and shoulder blades up. Rotate to your right. So I'd like you to keep the right leg in tabletop. As you, with intention, stretch the left leg by your feet. Uh, left leg by up to the wall by the feet. Then that left knee back into tabletop. Lower yourself back down with intention. So let's do that same side. Always twist to the right. Left leg extends long. Now when I say that phrase with intention, it's to make us aware of the movement, right? We're not just mindlessly dropping back onto the mat. We want to feel like there's some kind of engagement or invitation via our abdominals that asks that left knee to bend back in, that informs the torso to softly lower back down. Inhale to peel up and rotate. Remember like we talked about in uh, previous rotation exercises, that left rib basket can wrap around slightly to the wall on your right. That's going to create a nice amount of rotation. Beautiful. Guys, we have two changes coming up. Here we go. We're going to hold the rotation, the upper body's in flexion, combined with rotation, putting our focus now on this right leg. We're going to do a nice little toe tap, keeping the angle of 90 degrees of the right knee maintained. Good. Inhaling as we lower the right toe down. Exhale to return it back to tabletop. Keep that upper body in flexion, in rotation. Elbows are open, not squeezing your head like a vice. We've got three more. One more change is coming up, everybody. We've got two. Woo! One more change. Hang in there with me. I'm doing it with you. Hold it there. We're going to lower that left leg. Not one inch only. Lift up a tiny inch. Lower one inch. Lift up a tiny inch. So this right leg is staying in tabletop. We're just moving teeny tiny that left leg up and down while holding that flexion combined with rotation. We got five. We got this, folks. Four. Smile. Three. Woo. Last two. And one. Excellent work. Wow. Let's bridge it out. We have our feet flat on the mat. Again, maybe three inches of space between our two feet. Let's think about those creases under the buttocks. Those are known as your gland lines. It's a blend word for gluteus maximus and hamstring. So those gland lines engage. So float your hips up to the ceiling. And then crease up the top of the bikini or the speedo line. And you lengthen that tailbone back down. Trade the crease to that gland line to lift up. Trade the crease to the top of the hips as you lengthen back down. Good. Excellent. 
We're going to lift the hips up once again. Next phase, sweep the arms up, overhead, circle the arms out to the side. As the arms are circling around, you're going to melt the chest and the chin, roll down one single vertebra at a time. Let that tailbone lie heavy at the end. I need to move a little bit from the wall. You might need to as well, so you have room for your arms. Again, we pick the hips up via the glam lines. We're sweeping the arms overhead. Circle the arms out to the side as you soften heart from the chin. Rolling those billowy pockets of airspace between the vertebra onto the mat. Last one, hips lift up. Arm sweep overhead. No weight on the neck, no pinching in the shoulders or neck. Circle the arms around, soften heart from chin, melting down to the middle of the mat, and we regroup. Guys, let's get that crisscross sequence done to the other side. You don't have to turn around, by am. And we're going to go ahead and once again place our legs into tabletop. One at a time, hands behind the head. Heel the upper body up. This time we twist to the left. We're extending that right leg nice and long. Exhale, abdominals engage. You invite the right knee to bend once again into tabletop as we lower ourselves softly down. Again, if you think about the rotation combined with flexion, to give yourself an image that can make it less cumbersome, think of the bottom right rib. Trying to greet the upper inner left thigh, that's going to get you living right in the waistline. So that's more important than trying to touch right elbow to the opposite left knee. Inhale to rise up. Exhale. With intention in mind, there's that nice eye look, intention. With intention, we lower back down. Let's go for a couple more. Inhale as you rise up. Exhale as you lower down. Here's our next change coming up. Same as on the first side. We're going to come up, hold that rotation, toe tap, lower that left toe, exhale, lift it up. Feel that suspender like muscle we call the psoas, eccentrically lengthening to lower that left toe down, then concentrically shortening to lift that left leg back into tabletop. So it's not about working that grippy, pinchy hip flexor. Very nice, everybody. Two more, there's one more change coming up. You got this. Very nice. Hold. Lower that right foot a teeny tiny inch. Lift it up. Lower a teeny tiny. Lift it up. But six more. We made it this far. You can do this. Make that lift to lower even tinier, you guys. Three more. We have two. And we have one. Very good, friends. Let's grab the back of our thighs. Rock yourself up to sitting. And let's go right back to one of these Tony balls for the friends. So, we're going to hold one of the Tony balls, this time on our right. We want to find that nice neutral spine we talked about. Knees moving under hips, hands moving under shoulders. Beautiful. Can you feel that tailbone around the head stretching two directions? Even try not to watch me in the screen unless you have to. Find yourself just hearing my verbal cues. The reason being is we want to feel that back of the neck nice and long. The neck bones are always, or should always be, a continuation of the rest of the spine. Good. Now, we're going to sense the right shoulder blade staying nice and flat. We're going to feel for a moment, weights equal on both knees the same. The little weight shift. Recall that we only want maybe one inch of space between our knees. Knees to feet. Great. Now, from here, we slide that. Oh, I find this one's a harder side. So we found that right away. Find something similar or different, but you can feel those abs all the same. You're going to lengthen the right shoulder down. That depression of the right scapula cues the right arm to rattle the waist. Again, be relevant. How high up you lift that arm, that's not the goal. That's not our primary focus. Primary focus is right here. How well do you keep all of this stable and equally lengthened on both waistlines? Okay? That's the primary focus. So, when we lift that right arm, again, right here is the space of the wall behind you. Weight's even on both knees the same. Beautiful. The higher the right arm goes, 
Again, that's not the focus, but the higher the arm goes, the more the right shoulder blade slides down to the back line of the torso. As so you get that key about right here as well. Good friends, keep that going on. Inhale to rise up. Exhale to lower down. Beautiful. Nice. Weight does a shift even slightly to one knee more than the other. Got two more, but we're grabbing both on balls, one in each hand, for that upward body jump of rotation. And bring it back. Great. So we have both Tony balls or weights, whichever you're using. Let's go ahead and find if we could please that mermaid or merman sitting position. Great. Just like so. Remember, it's not that important that the left butt cheek actually touch the mat, so don't worry about forcing it down. It's just for the least. Okay, we have a Tony ball in each hand. Let's try to find ourselves kind of squared off to the wall that your head was towards a couple of exercises ago. Beautiful. We're going to first bend the elbows and do your best to keep weight even on both hands. If that's happening, if weight's even on both hands, then more likely than not, you've got a nice squared off chest and shoulder vertebrae. Good. Now, from the waistline, the full wrap waistline, we're going to propel off the floor add a rotation to your left and then come back or if you're on the right side whatever side you didn't do the first time beautiful again we're inhaling coming up with length exhaling resisting gravity on the way down and this side is my more challenging side i'm discovering inhale hashtag discoveries right beautiful good to know that about our bodies Inhale to rise up, crown the head, top of the earth, stretch into the sky. Exhale, resist gravity on the way down. Try to keep those shoulders plugged down and away from the neck of your lobes. Very nice, everybody. And do your best when coming out of it to land softly on both hands at the same time, or land softly with both weights, reading the mat at the same time, versus your plunk, your plunk, like that. All right? Gonna really get you into that waistline. We have just a couple more. Very nice. Meditating off your mat with that inhale. Exhale to lower. Last one. And then bring it back down. Fantastic. But we don't need both, just one weight or tone involved, this time in your right hand. We find ourselves on our left elbow and forearm. And what I want us to remember is again the importance of finding that lift of our right with basket. So let's say we're all on our left arm. We imagine there's like a little fisherman sitting up there at the top of your wall. And you threw a fishing line out. Imagine that fishing hook snagged onto your bottom left rib and he's reeling you in. So that fishing line lifts that left rib basket away from the mat. So I want you to keep that focus more so than anything we do with the arm and leg in this next upcoming exercise. Feel that fisherman's line pulling and lifting that left rib basket away from the floor. So we've got our legs stacked, neutral spine and pelvis, we're not tucked under with the tailbone. Let's just set our right arm by our side. Like a saloon door, we're going to open that right forearm and then cross over the line with it. Great. Right shoulder blade floats down at the moment. We're seeing the world on a diagonal line. So no intention should be like this, okay? You can see that's going to be a non-optimal experience. Good. Beautiful. Yes, and instead of thinking about that right arm, keep thinking about what's happening here. Because this is really a main event. Beautiful. But talking about the right arm, let's think about that right upper arm bone. I don't know if anyone knows what that's called. It's called your humorous. So right now, we're externally rotating that humerus with this arm situation. So we're finding that external rotation at the shoulder joint. Layering on for an even more core challenge, we have the option of picking up that left hip. So now we can even maybe imagine, in addition to that fishing line, there's a burlap sack suspended from the ceiling, wrapped around your left hip, like the Brooks Brothers logo. Holding your hip up and sticks. You guys feel that? Very good. Front of the right shoulder opens and broadens as you reach that right arm towards the ceiling. Exhale to bring it back. Good. Try to apply as little torso weight as possible.
possible on your left shoulder and left elbow. Beautiful guys. Now, Larry, or not, if this is your pleasure, for a little more challenge, you can stretch your right leg long, have your right big toe resting on the mat, or let that right leg hover, not too high. That's going to really flare things up. Very good. Inhale as you open. Exhale as you cross your mid line. So let's do more. Don't forget that fishing line. Looking at the world sideways now, choosing this adventure. Got one more. Lower that foot. Lower that hip. Beautiful. I'm going to bend you back the other way a little bit. So we're now going to be prone. That's a fancy Pilates way of saying on your stomach. We're going to find ourselves extending not the whole spine right now, just the upper portion of the spine. So much as what we're about to do, you'll be hearing my verbal cueing. Okay? Together, let's bring our forehead onto the mat. Great. Now I'm going to ask for about three, four inches of space between your two feet. Have all ten toes really anchored heavily to the mat. Okay. Glutes here can be engaged, but not overly gripped. Good. There should be some length in your lumbar spine here. Good. Without over effort happening through the arm, imagine pushing a marble away with the tip of your nose. And let that little marble movement position the neck in line with the rest of the spine. As you continue to inhale, you can extend the upper thoracic, not a lot. Your eye line should be down at the mat or at the floor above your mat. Feel that nice continuous line from the neck through the rest of the spine so no one's looking at that wall, cranking in the back. Take a moment to hover those arms, those forearms and hands, off the floor without dropping your chest height, okay? So we want to find shoulders down, chest is hovering, bottom lip is still in contact with the mat, pubic bone is firmly pressing into the mat as well. On your next exhale, we're going to take it back down, forehead relaxes, and then that's your cue. Just relax the shoulders, okay? So that's in a, it in a nutshell. Let's go into a four breath movement here. So we're going to slide the shoulders down as we inhale. Inhale, keep inhaling as you extend that upper back. Exhale, bring your forearms and hands to a hover. Inhale, lower the arms back to the mat. And then exhale, lengthen the forehead back to the mat. Relax in everything at the end. Again, we slide the shoulders down. We inhale to extend that upper thoracic. Exhale, engage navel in and up as you float the forearms and hands off. Some of the are still heavy into the floor. Inhale, lower the arms. Exhale, return the forehead back down. Fantastic. Go ahead and do a nice little quick child's pose, stretching everything out. We're going to round our lower back. And then we're going to bring everything up to standing in just a moment. Excellent. Let's roll all the way up. Guys, let's get ready to do a squat. Okay, so I'm going to have us do the weights of Tony Balls one more time. Okay, we started class with a plie. We're going to finish class with a squat. So let's find our toes are all ten shining straight ahead. Fantastic. Good. If any time the arms become aggressive with the weights, just do one with that. Beautiful. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and just take a moment, do your weights equal on both the toes and the heels the same. Good, we're not clenching our glutes. Find a crease right at the top of the hip. That in turn sweeps the arms up. And when we sweep the arms up, they can go a little wider than shoulder. They don't even have to come up as high as your shoulders. If you feel like that's going into your neck, maybe go lower, okay? Inhale to rise tall, lengthening those long arms back down to the outside of your hips. Or keep that. We'll give you the profile here. Increase at the top of the hips, sitting bones are broadening, shoulder blades melting down around the rib basket to invite those arms to raise up. Inhale, sit bones narrow, shoulder blades to press down, and you return to start. Let's do that a couple more times. Exhale to lower. Inhale to rise. You'll know that the Tony Balls of weight, if they're not too heavy, actually help you find 
that core connection, that core initiation, because we're providing a counterbalance. So we don't have to depend so much on our legs to have the food, right? We can actually get acquainted with the base of our pelvis engaging to lower us down and engaging to bring us up to standing. Can you feel that counterbalance that the weights of hand provide? Okay? Beautiful. Keep going at your own pace. Double checking that your knees trap in line with your big toe, second toe. We don't want them opening, nor do we want them knocking into one another. Beautiful. Good. Let's go for two more. We do have another change coming up. Exhaling to lower. Inhaling to rise up. Last one. Let's go ahead and find it here. Excellent job. Beautiful. So we're going to bend both elbows now to 90 degrees. Fantastic. Let's double check you haven't crowded those shoulders up or curved the shoulder blades forward. Take your right arm and bring it back. So you've got your tricep going for the right. Your bicep is going to go for the left. You stand and bend. This is also going to activate the cross diagonal sling. Check your hips are square. Shoulder girdle is square. There's no rotating. Beautiful. Excellent. Now the bicep arm, let's give it a little pulse up. Good. While you extend that tricep arm. Beautiful. Be smooth. Both arms moving the same way. Good. And again, as funky as the coordination aspect of this initially seems to be, try to discover how making the arms do two separate things creates a better awareness of that cross diagonal sling core activation. Because the main event is keeping that torso and pelvis square and stabilized as we move the periphery. Very nice. We're going to go for four. Weight stays equal on both feet the same. Three. There is an interlude. We have two. And we have one. Let's bring both arms down by our side. Both arms are long by our hips. Beautiful. Without changing your height, we're going to peel both heels off of the floor just by a quarter inch. I don't want to see a big lift of the heels. Just by a quarter inch. Excellent. Little snow angels. Parallel grip. No need to worry about lifting the arms up as high as your shoulders. Think more instead that your arms are forming the shape of an airplane's belly as they open. Good. Keep all ten toe cushions melting into the mat equally. We're here for four. Then we're going to do that bicep-tricep combo on the other side. I'll let us come up to standing in between. Let's go for three. Beautiful. Two. Lower those heels. Rise all the way up. Let's go ahead and find that crease one last time. At the top of the hip, sitting bones broad and both arms float up. Excellent. Now, my friend, we're going to bend that right arm. Left arm is going to magnetize by the sideline of the body. Good. Let's bend both elbows to start. Let's extend both elbows to start. So this will be the first phase. The upper arm bone, which is called your humerus, on both arms. Keep that upper arm bone very, very steady and still. When in doubt, one quick and easy way to know your abs are firing like they should is if you keep weight equal on both feet the same. You don't feel like you're shifting to one foot more than the other. Good. Keep that tailbone long. Remember, we're not looking for a tuck under tailbone. We got three more, then that little change where we're pulsing more. Two. Hold. Go ahead and bend both arms. Instead of extending that right arm, you're going to pulse it up a little bit as you stretch. And then the left arm. The left arm is basically doing the same thing. Both wrists are parallel. Excellent. Collar bones are wide. Shoulder joints are level. And this is where you really want to feel, and I certainly do, I hope you do too, that sincere crisscrossing through the abdominals as you're working very hard to keep that shoulder girdle stabilized, keep that shoulder girdle and torso and pelvis squared off and in neutral. We have four. We have three. Weight is even on the toes and the heels the same. For two, we stretch after this, folks. One, let's come all the way up. 
Beautiful. Let's go ahead and pick up the wall paper for a moment against the wall. We're just going to peel forward. We're going to allow ourselves to round forward one vertebra at a time. Head is dropped. Knees are welcome to bend. Let go of the weights. Let your arms dangle like a weeping willow tre uh, tree branches. And then we're going to curl up to standing slowly. Arms are dangling like wet spaghetti noodles. Head is heavy. Stack the building pockets of their space between the vertebrae, one at the top of the other. Don't lift the head too soon. Try to get even longer than you start in class. Head floats up last. Take your left arm up. Side bend over to the right side. Come up nice, tall, and vertical. Both arms are long. Rotate with length to your left side. Come back to center. Lower both arms down. Now we're taking the right arm up and side bend our torso to the left. Scanning these ribs up here. We're going to come up on the long, rotate to the right. Come back to center one more thing. We take the arms up. We're just going to open those arms, lifting our chest up with intention. We don't want to throw our head recklessly back. Come back to tall and vertical. Let's do that once again. So that upper thoracic goes into extension, belly button pulls in and up, sternum lifts up to the ceiling. Go back to center, tall and vertical, and repeat. Thank you, everyone. You did a great job today. Thank you for joining me today. It was great to see everybody, all three of you. I hope you had a great time. I certainly had a good time teaching you all today. And I Paul. Thank you. I'm sweaty. Good. I'm sweaty. <laughs> I am sweaty yeah. too. I hope you all have a fantastic Sunday and I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.